So Einstein proposed the theory of special relativity in 1905, which was based on an assumption that gives the speed of light, which is approximately 300,000 kilometers per second in a vacuum, a special status. Einstein postulated that light always travels at the same speed for every observer, regardless of the observer's speed. So the speed of light is a great candidate to be a named constant value in our example application. So let's briefly explain the function of our example application. Our application is going to calculate the approximate time it will take for information sent from the planet Mars to reach Earth. So it is accepted that electromagnetic waves can travel through a vacuum at the speed of light. Now we know that it is accepted that the speed of light never changes. So this is a great example of a value that can be represented in code as a named constant. Now let's look at our read-only variable for this application. The distance between Earth and Mars changes because these two planets are constantly orbiting around the Sun. For the purpose of our example application, we are mostly interested in the average distance between the Earth and Mars, and an approximate result of how long it takes for information to travel from Mars to Earth. But we also want the flexibility to be able to adapt our application to changing distances between the Earth and Mars, so that we can get an approximate value of how long information will take to reach Earth from Mars at different times of the year. So the distance between Earth and Mars can vary, but for the purposes of our application, we only want to set the value once for the life of the application each time it is run. So we are going to use the distance between Earth and Mars as our read-only variable. So let's create a class and name it Mars. Within this class, let's declare our read-only member variable and name it distance to Mars. This read-only variable is defined using the int keyword So let's create the constructor, which must be given the same name as the class, Mars. Now in this constructor, I want to write code that sets the read-only variable from a configuration file. So let's add a config file to our application, and we'll name it app.config. This file is an XML file that will, in this case, be used to configure a value that will be retrieved in the constructor of objects created from our custom type, Mars. So let's add our value to the config file. So we need to add a child XML element named apt settings to the configuration XML parent element in the app.config XML file. Within the app settings element, we can add a child XML element that will contain our read-only value representing the distance between Mars and Earth. This XML element must be named add. Within the add XML element, we are going to establish a key value pair by inserting two XML attributes into the add element. First, we'll insert the key attribute. So we need to type key equals distance to Mars. Our unique key in our configuration settings file will be named distance to Mars. We then insert the attribute called value into the add XML element. So we type value equals, and this value will represent the average distance between Mars and Earth, which is about 225 million kilometers. So now that we have completed our configuration file for this application, we need to be able to read this value at runtime. So we want to use the Configuration Manager class for this purpose. Okay, so the C-Sharp compiler is saying that this class does not exist in this context. Let's first include the using system.configuration directive at the top of our code under the using system directive and see if this corrects our issue. Okay, we still have an issue. So we are missing the appropriate assembly that contains the Configuration Manager class but we are able to use the Manage NuGet package facility in Visual Studio to download and install the appropriate NuGet package, which will include the assembly we need. So all we need to do is right-click the dependency node in our Solution Explorer window and click the Manage NuGet package context menu item. We then see our NuGet package manager window, which is a facility where we can search for NuGet packages. We wish to search for the configuration manager, so let's make sure that we are in the Browse tab of the NuGet Package Manager window. Then in the search text box, we can type Configuration Manager. And this is the one we want, so we'll install this. Now we have our config file established and the appropriate dependency installed, which will allow us to use a class, Configuration Manager, to read our configured value into our read-only distance to Mars variable. So let's write the code to retrieve the value from the distance to Mars configuration setting from the app.config file. Okay, so you can see that we are using the key distance to Mars to read the configured value into our read-only variable, which is also named distance to Mars. Great, so the next step is to write a method that will perform a simple calculation, which is simply the speed of light divided into the distance in kilometers 
between Earth and Mars. So firstly we need to include our named constant which will represent the speed of light. And we'll call this constant speed of light. We'll define it as an N32 type and assign its value to the speed of light which is approximately 300,000 kilometers per second. Okay, so let's write a method and call it get info travel time. The code in this method will calculate the approximate information travel time from Mars to Earth. This calculation is the distance to Mars divided by the speed of light. So let's write the code to implement this class and output the result of the calculation to the console screen. Let's run the code. So when we use the approximate average distance between the Earth and Mars in our calculation, the approximate information travel time between Mars and Earth at this distance is 750 seconds. Five principles are represented by the acronym SOLID in object-orientated programming. The details of this are beyond the scope of this tutorial, but the first letter stands for Single Responsibility Principle, which we are violating in our Mars class. The single responsibility principle basically says that a class implementation should carry only one responsibility. So the speed of light is obviously not unique to Mars. So let's establish a new class called constants, which can house our named constant speed of light. The constants class allows for the extension of the constants class in the future. If for example we wanted to include other constant values like the gravitational constant for Earth and the gravitational constant for Mars, we can extend the constants class by simply adding these new named constants. You can see that the keyword static has not been included when declaring the constant, but it is being accessed as though it were a static variable. Notice that this constant value can be accessed by simply typing constants.speedoflight. The static keyword is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but basically a static keyword means a public static field can be accessed without an object being created from the class in which it resides. A static variable is a member of the class and not the object that is derived from the class. Ok, so you can see the fundamental difference between a read-only variable and a constant. The speed of light is not going to change, but the distance between Mars and Earth can vary between two points in time. For the purpose of the application, however, we want to configure the value for the distance between Earth and Mars. And we want the value in our read-only variable distance to Mars to be set once and then never change during a particular run of the application. We can, of course, change the distance to Mars read-only variable by altering the configuration file. So let's say we want to know the approximate travel time of information from Mars to Earth for when Earth and Mars are at the closest distance from one another. This value is about 54.6 million kilometers. So all we need to do is plug the value into our configuration file and run the code. Please see the description below for details regarding any supplementary information associated with this tutorial. All code and related documentation can be downloaded from GitHub repositories. Details of where you can find these repositories are below in the description. Please hit the thumbs up icon if you feel you have gained value from viewing this tutorial, and please subscribe. If you are already subscribed, please hit the bell icon to be notified of future content which will be coming soon. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.